Design thinking challenges, I hear them all the time from attendees and clients. Obstacles that practitioners face when trying to practice design thinking. Let's discuss the three I hear most often and potential ways to overcome these obstacles. Challenge number one, my team has no interest in learning or trying another thing. My answer to this is always start with empathy for those peers. Companies historically love to force employees into the latest and greatest framework in hopes of making things run more smoothly. Especially in older companies, some employees who have been there for a while have potentially lived through countless transformations. My suggestion here is twofold. Don't introduce it as a new framework. Instead, introduce design thinking as a toolkit that you can use as needed to meet needs that you have on your team. Pick and choose specific activities that can fill relevant gaps and be immediately useful. It won't be a quick change, but your first goal is just open people's minds to the value of working in a human-centered way and how spending time understanding the user, their need, exploring many different solutions early on can help save time down the road. Second, start small. When in doubt, start with empathy mapping, the first phase of design thinking. I find this is a really quick win, especially for peers who are removed from end users. Do this by spending an hour presenting user research and then help them make an empathy map that you can use across the team as a single source of truth as the project progresses. This to say, if all that doesn't work, sometimes FOMO, fear of missing out, can work in your favor. Find a team or organization or even another company that your team idolizes and see what methods they're using. Do they use any design thinking activities? If so, try that angle. Challenge number two, I have no time. While design thinking is taught and publicized as a process, you do not have to practice it this way. In fact, mature practitioners view design thinking less as a process and more as a toolkit, pooling ideas and activities as needed based on their contextual goals. If you are trying to use design thinking but strap for time, Start with super small time commitments. Set up a recurring 30 minute to an hour long meeting each week and slowly start to tackle the design thinking process for upcoming work. Think two to three sprints ahead. What user or persona can you start to identify? What might their need be? Work your way through this process over these weekly meetings. It may be slow, but don't underestimate the human-centered culture you're beginning to build over time. And last, challenge number three, I don't know where to start. Many practitioners just simply don't know how or where to start practicing design thinking. If this is the case for you, scope your effort. I can't stress it enough. Don't put an unreasonable burden on yourself to tackle huge, upcoming, high-profile projects using a new process that you don't feel comfortable with. Instead, choose a small initiative, ideally one that you have full responsibility over. Then use this as a case study. Work your way through the design thinking process, starting with user research, identifying the core need, iterating and prioritizing, and then prototyping and testing those ideas through implementation. Document each step of the way as a way to share with others in the future. Just like we iterate on the products we create, we have to iterate on our process. Design thinking is meant to help you approach work in a human-centered way, not cause stress, panic, or be a checklist. Don't expect things to be perfect. We are called practitioners for a reason. Trust yourself to explore different activities and reflect on your process, what works and why.